Okay, as we all know, the standard way to integrate secant x is to actually multiply the top and bottom by the factor secant x plus tangent x. And this actually works out really nicely because if we distribute the top, we get secant square x and this and that, we get plus secant x tangent x. And in fact, we can do a u sub now that u equals the denominator. And you see right here, we differentiate that, we get du is equal to secant x times tangent x, and then plus the derivative of this, which is secant square x. And notice the whole thing right here is exactly what we have. And of course, the order of the addition doesn't matter. So all in all, this right here, along with the dx together, this is just going to be our du. So we can take this integral to the u world, and you see I put the du on the side, we have the 1, and the bottom is the u. So we just have to integrate 1 over u in the u world. And that's of course natural log absolute value of u, and in the end just put the u back right here, right? This right here back for the u, and we get this. So that's the answer after we put down the plus c, and this is it. And now, have you guys ever wondered, what if we didn't multiply the top and bottom right here first? In fact, how did we even know to multiply this in the first place, right? Well, today I'll show you guys how to integrate secant x without doing this first. And we will still end up with the standard result. And the procedure is going to be longer, but you know, maybe this will answer your question, like why we multiply that in the first place. So check this out. Here we go. Let's look at the integral of secant x dx. First step, we know secant is equal to 1 over cosine, so let's put that down. Integral 1 over cosine x dx, like this. And now we have a small trouble. We don't have a, a lot of things to work with. If we let u equals to the denominator, u equals cosine x. But in that case, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. We don't have sine x factor to help us out, right? And keep in mind, when we are doing integrals, sometimes the more, the better. But in fact, I'm not going to multiply the top and bottom by sine x. Because if I have sine x here, and cosine x, sine x, unfortunately on the bottom, we don't have some nice identity for, for that in this situation. In fact, I will actually multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. Because now we see we have the integral of cosine x over this and that is of course cosine square x. And we have a really nice identity for cosine square x. Namely, 1 minus uh, sine square x. So I will just write it cosine x over 1 minus sine square x. Just the identity for that. And this is so nice because when we have an integral, when we have sine cosine, they will help each other out. In this case here though, we will let u equals to just sine to the first power x because we see that du is equal to cosine x dx. This is very nice. You will see on the top, cosine x dx, this is precisely our du. So you see this is the integral of 1 over 1 minus, this right here is the u, so we have u squared, and all that is the du, and we put it on the side. I like to put the du on the side, yeah, you sh I think it helps. Now, how can we integrate this though? Don't do tricks up, otherwise we get back to the original, right? And we cannot do u sub because again, we don't have a lot of things to work with. But the thing is that we have 1 minus u squared, we actually can factor this, and then we can do partial fractions. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So right here, let's factor it. We'll end up with 1 plus u times 1 minus u. And here's the deal. We will have the integral. We break this fraction down into two little fractions. The first fraction will have 1 plus u for the, its denominator. And the second fraction will have 1 minus u for its denominator. On the top, because the bottom right here, they are linear, so on the top, we just have constants. And to figure out these numbers right here, all we have to do is the cover method. To figure this out, we go back to the original, and we cover the same exact denominator. And we have to ask ourselves, how can we make 1 plus u equals to 0? Well, u has to be negative 1. And we put negative 1 in here. And now we see 1 over 1 minus negative 1, namely 1 plus 1 on the bottom. 2, yeah? So all in all, on the top, we get 1 half. 
And we'll do it again right here. For 1 minus u, we go back to the original and we cut the same denominator. And we have to ask ourselves, how can we make this equal to 0? u has to be positive 1. And you put the 1 right here and you get 1 over 1 plus 1, which is again 1 half, like this. And now we are ready to integrate. This right here will give us, well, we have 1 half. And on the bottom here, we have a linear situation. So we get ln absolute value of 1 plus u. And check the derivative. The derivative of 1 plus u is just 1. So we don't have to divide the 1 because it doesn't really matter. But for the other one, we have the 1 half right here. And then we have the natural log absolute value. Right here we have the 1 minus u. So let's just put that down. But in this case, we are again going to look at the derivative right here. The derivative of 1 minus u is negative 1. Divided by negative 1, so we will have a negative right here, right? And then we're not done yet, we'll just put down the sign x back to the u and all that stuff. So you will see this is going to be 1 half. And in fact, I can factor out the 1 half and I will also combine the natural logs together. I'll show you. This is the natural log, absolute value. And this is going to be on the top, which is going to give us 1 plus the u is the sine x. So I will just put down sine x here. And this will go down to the denominator because we're subtracting this natural log. So this inside goes down to the denominator. So we have 1 minus u is, again, the sine x, like this. And technically, we are done. If you pursue it this way, this right here will have been the answer for the integral of secant x. So if you would like, you can just say plus c. This right here is totally OK. But the serious thing is that nobody really does this. So now, I will have to take some time to convince you guys that they are actually the same thing, right? And you have two ways to do it. First way, you can go from here to here. Second way, you can go from here to there, up to you. Um, I think I will go from here to there, because again, that's a standard result. I want to end up with the standard result for you guys. So now, here is the observation that they are actually the same. I will put this down. We have 1 half natural log absolute value of 1 plus sin x over 1 minus sin x. And I will put on the plus C later. In fact, this is exactly the same as that after you work it out. So the C is actually the same. But anyway, for this right here, what we'll do is, you see the bottom, we have 1 minus sine x. And this is just to the first power. We don't like it too much. We prefer to have 1 minus sine squared x. And we will know much better about that. So let me multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus sine x. Similarly, we do the same right here. Don't forget about that. Now, check this out. Here we have 1 half, and then we have the natural log, and then the absolute value. On the top, of course, the same thing times same thing. It's just parentheses 1 plus sine x squared, like this. On the bottom, we have this over this times that. We get 1 minus sine square x, right? a minus b times a plus b, we just get a squared minus b squared, and we get that. And now this is so perfect, because this is precisely cosine square x, isn't it? Yes, it is. So here we have 1 half natural log absolute value on the top. Again, parentheses, 1 plus sine x, and then square. On the bottom, we have cosine square x, like this. Right? So let me just emphasize that. Now notice, both of them have the square. So we can just like write it down as this. 1 half, natural log, absolute value, put a parentheses with the inside, 1 plus sine x over cosine x. And we will put a second power like this, parentheses square. Yeah? Because both of them have the second power. And now, yes, you know it. Because we are in the natural log, when we have this to the second power, we can bring the power to the front. 
don't minus one. Right, even though you minus one, it's okay, but we have this strategy has nothing to do with the derivative. Do not do the minus one. Just the natural law property, yeah? Okay, so let me just put this down. Of course, we will have two times one half. Let me just put it down as two over two. And we have natural log absolute value just the inside, which is one plus sine x over cosine x, isn't it? So can we just write this over cosine x here and over cosine x here, yeah? And now, this and that, of course, they cancel to be one, so that's easy, yeah? And then we get natural log absolute value, one over cosine is what? Yes, secant x. And then sine x over cosine x is what? Yes, tangent x, and that's plus tangent x. And with all that, we are done, right? I don't need to put on plus z because this is just a trick identity, right? So, as you can see, this right here will give you that, and hopefully this right here will answer some of you guys' questions, like why we actually multiply this right here. Perhaps it's just some famous steps, right? Famous steps that you should know, and once you know it, maybe later on, if you're encountering a similar question, you can use the similar approach. Okay, if you're like me, who really wants to learn about how mathematics works and not just remember in the formulas, then I will highly recommend you guys to come to Brilliant Network and check them out. This right here is a Math and Sam's website and it offers a lot of interesting courses for you guys. They have over 50 interactive courses for you guys to choose from, ranging from algebra, geometry, calculus, and a lot more. And recently, they have added more classes for you guys, such as this, the probability class. Probability is really really interesting, but it's also really really hard. However, they break down into topics and categories and you can really learn and benefit from their lessons. This right here, they talk about how probability is everywhere. And I would also like to show you guys the common misconceptions because for probabilities, there's no like definite way to just do the questions every single time. But this right here, you really have to be creative and really careful with all the things that you have to take into consideration. And so far, I've been really happy with Brilliant Work because they offer such a wide variety of the courses and problems for me to practice with. And I believe you guys can benefit it from here too. And if you use the link brain.work/blackandrepan, you can get a 20% off discount to the annual premium subscription. This way, you can get access to all of their interesting courses. So be sure you guys click the link in the description and check out Brain Network. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed this video. And as always, that's it.